Good morning all. Not long ago I put a Z80 CPU on a piece of breadboard and uh, using a slow running clock and a pseudo ROM which was just eight resistors I got it to clock through a program and we watched LEDs uh, change state, lights flash and all that sort of thing. Well now instead of a pseudo ROM I'm going to use a real EEPROM and uh, we're going to wire it up and try and get uh, the memory, the data that's in the memory, out. So this is the EEPROM. It's an AM2716DC. Uh, that logo looks like advanced micro devices to me. Uh, it's dated 1979, so it's pretty old. Now the 16 refers to 16 kilobytes of memory. Uh, no, kilobits. So in terms of bytes, we need to uh, divide that by eight. So it's only two kilobytes of EEPROM memory. So I found a data sheet for the AM2716. And uh, down here in the ordering information, we've got the AM2716DC, which has an access time of uh, 450 nanoseconds. There were faster devices, but they would have cost uh, more, presumably. So this is a 16,384-bit, ultraviolet erasable and programmable read-only memory. It's organized as 2048, so 2K. Now they say words by 8 bits per word, so really that means bytes. It's 2K bytes, operates from a single 5-volt supply, that'll be handy. Now it also says over here, fully static operation, no clocks. So we don't need uh, a clock to clock this thing. So this 555 timer can come off my prototyping board. So to start wiring this up, I need to look at the uh, pin diagram. And uh, we can see that VCC is on pin 24 and ground is on pin 12. So let's put those connections on first. Uh, that's VCC on pin 24 and ground is on pin 12. Yeah, that looks right to me. Now the eight data lines are here. They're marked 0, zero uh, through to 0, 07. They're all at the bottom end of the chip. Uh, they're marked O rather than D because of course they're only outputs because this is a read only memory. Now when you program this chip, they do become inputs, uh, but they haven't called them D, they've called them O. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put LEDs on those pins but let's get the address line sorted out first. We have address A0 here up to A7, then there's A8, A9, and A10 is here. And uh, that means that we have 11 address lines, A0 to A10, and two to the power of 11 is 2048. So I'm putting these 1K resistors tying all of the address lines to ground which means that the address that will be presented to the EEPROM will be zero on every single address line. That means that we'll be selecting the very first memory location inside this memory chip. Right, so that's A0 to A7 done. That's the first eight address lines. Now A8 is there, that needs to go to uh, ground, A9, is the one next to it that goes to ground. Now A10 is leave a gap of two and fit another resistor. Uh, keep it the same orientation. Yeah, so that's A10. So that's all of the 11 address lines pulled down to ground. Now this signal here, uh, chip enable stroke program. Uh, well, for chip enable, it's active low. So to enable this chip, which we will have to do if we want to get any data out of it, we need to pull that low. So that's another resistor in there. Then there's output enable just above A10. Uh, that also needs to pull low. Now that enables the output drivers so that the data will appear on the O lines. So I need to pull that one low as well. Need another resistor for that. Down to zero volts. And finally, we've got VPP. Now this is the programming voltage pin. And uh, here's the table of the voltages that need to be on the various pins. 
uh, VCC of course is plus 5 volts at all times. VPP, the programming voltage, is plus 5 volts for a read and also for standby. And then it goes up to plus 25 volts for programming, program verify and program inhibit. So just to read this chip, we need to set VPP to plus 5 volts. Uh, so I'm going to do that in a slightly unusual way. So I'm going to pull this one up with a diode uh, to VCC for reasons which will become apparent later on. That doesn't seem to want to jump that gap. So there, there's a diode to uh, 5 volts VCC going to the VPP pin. Okay. So that's everything done uh, apart from the data lines, which are these O lines. So what I'm going to do with those is put uh, an LED on each of those uh, with the resistor, which is the uh, cathode side, to ground to negative voltage uh, so that when the outputs go high, these LEDs light up. So we should be able to see on these blue LEDs the data that's in the chip. Uh, right, so I think that's everything. Uh, all the addresses, A0 to A10, all the outputs, uh, O0 to O7. Chip enable is low and output enable is low. All I need to do now is put power to this thing. So 5 volts, courtesy of 4 Ener loop nickel metal hydrides. So switch on and what can we see? Mmm, two lights. Now, these uh, data lines are D7, D6, D5, D4. So we can read these four as a hexadecimal value. Well, it's 0010, which is two in hexadecimal. And then we've got uh, D3, D2, D1, D0. So these four, this one unfortunately is on this side, which is a bit of a nuisance. I suppose I could move that over actually and put a link wire on. Yeah, perhaps I'll do that. But anyway, we've got 0001, which is one. So we've got two, one, 21. Right, so we have the value, the data value 21 hexadecimal in address location 0. Now I have moved that uh, blue LED to the other side. The only thing we have to do is we have to read this uh, 4 bits downwards and this 4 bits upwards, but that's not a major issue. So in order to check what's in address location 1, let's put 1 there, I have to pull one of the address lines away from 0 volts and pull it up to VCC. And uh, we need to do that on address line zero. It's the least significant uh, address line. So let's pull that up to VCC, five volts. And now we can see that in address position one, we actually have the data value zero, zero. Uh, none of the LEDs are lit. So let's move on through the address space. Um, the address lines currently are zero, 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 zero with a 1 on this least significant address, A0. If I now move that to A1, we get the next byte. So this is the uh, byte of data that's in address location 2. And it is 1110. That's E hexadecimal, and that's 0. So it's E0. E0. And I can keep working through this. Now I'm going to need two wires to look at uh, address location 3, because it will need to be... 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 on the bottom two lines. So let's do that. Uh, I'll put that onto that positive. That's address location 3. Let's read it. It's uh, 0, 1, 0, 0. So that's 4. And that's 0, 1, 1, 0, So that's 6. So it's 46 in address location 3. What does all this mean? Well, this is almost certainly going to be a Z80 uh, machine code because the Z80 was the only uh, CPU that I ever worked with. And I do recognize some of these. So let's look a couple of them up in this Z80 data book. Right, the first one is 21. And if I look in here, I can see it uh, there, 21. It's load the HL register with two bytes of data because it's a 16-bit register. Uh, the two bytes of data immediately follow the instructions. So it's 21 NN. Let's take a look at that. So it's load the HL register with these two bytes of data. Now it's little endian, so you get the uh, low byte first and then the high byte. So it's actually load HL 
with E000. Let's write that in. Okay, next is 46. Now this is another load. It's an 8-bit load in this case. There it is, uh, 46. So it's load, uh, where's the source? Here's the source, yes. Load indirectly from whatever the HL register is pointing to and put that data byte into the B register. Mm. So that's written as load the B register with whatever the HL register uh, and so with the data byte in memory that the HL register is pointing to. Well, HL, HL is pointing to the memory address E000. So the CPU will go and get whatever byte of data is at location E000. That's what the HL register is pointing to. And it will load it into the B register. Now that's probably enough of that because uh, I don't know what this program's doing. And we'd have to go a lot further through the memory to try and make any sense of what's being done, but uh, there are two instructions. The first one is a three byte instruction and the second one is a single byte instruction. But uh, one thing's fairly clear and that is that this EEPROM has data in it. Okay, there's nothing at that location, but all the other locations have different uh, data values in them. So how do we erase this EEPROM? Well, we have to use ultraviolet light. We have to put this EEPROM in an EEPROM eraser. And uh, here is my old EEPROM eraser. It says uh, Northern EEPROM eraser UV1B. It has a little drawer which you pull out. Oh, it's got an EEPROM in it. Oh, that's interesting. What's that? Oh, that's another 2716. Uh, so it's got uh, some anti-static foam here. We put the EEPROM on here, switch on, and an ultraviolet light comes on. Let's see if the camera can see that. Now this is a very basic EEPROM eraser, it's got no timer on it, it's just got an on-off switch and there's an override uh, micro switch at the back so that the UV light doesn't come on until the drawer goes in, but you can just about see it if you push that in. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up. Right, yeah, you can just about see it. If I slip a piece of paper in there, there's not much of a gap. You can just about see the ultraviolet light uh, illuminating the paper in there. So let's uh, stick the EEPROM that I've just been looking at in there, give it mm, about 15 minutes and see if it erases it. Right, so I've lifted the EEPROM out of my prototyping board. Let's shove it in the eraser. It should sit about half an inch or so below the uh, lamp, which is an old tube. It's not LEDs because there were no UV LEDs uh, back when I bought this. So it's a glass tube. Uh, which puts out ultraviolet light. I'll just make a note of the time, 25 past. Let's give it about 15 minutes. So with regard to erasing the uh, EEPROM, the data sheet says, um, clear all locations of the programmed contents. It's necessary to expose to an ultraviolet light source. A dosage of 15 watt seconds per centimeter squared is required to completely erase the device. This can be obtained by exposure to an ultraviolet lamp wavelength of 2,537 angstroms with intensity of 12,000 microwatts per centimeter squared for 15 to 20 minutes. Right. Well, that should work. It always did. So each of the memory bits in here, and there are 16,384 bits inside a 2716, um, holds one bit of charge, and it does so with one transistor, which is uh, a MOSFET in effect, uh, with a floating gate. Now that charge just simply sits there, floating, and it'll sit there for years and years. I mean, this EEPROM, the one that's in the um, eraser, probably hasn't been touched for 30 years. So the data just sits there as a floating charge. Now to get rid of that charge, ultraviolet light, uh, somehow, and I don't quite know what the process is, uh, creates a path to ground for that charge and it just gradually leaks away over the 15 minutes or so that it's sitting in the eraser and that will then empty the location that will read as high so when we read a fully erased EEPROM we should see all the LEDs come on in every location and uh, it does say here that exposure to fluorescent light and sunlight will eventually erase the EEPROM so exposure should be prevented, um, cover by an opaque label or substance. I suppose if these EEPROMs are going to be outdoors, why well, they would be, I don't know. But uh, 
Yeah, sunlight will erase these EEPROMs. Okay, time's up. Stop that. Uh, time's up. Let's see how we've done with the erasure. Right, let's switch that off. And, oh, that's quite warm on top. Pull that out. Now, is that warm? Oh, actually, yeah, that's pretty hot. Having been blasted with UV light for 15 minutes, that's quite warm. So I'll stick that back in the breadboard now and uh, we'll check all the, well, the first few memory locations. Right, let's switch on. Uh, all my pull down resistors are in, are in place on the address line, so we'll get address zero. And we do indeed have all the lights on, so that shows that address zero has been erased. Uh, erasure takes it to all ones, so uh, F, F, hexadecimal. Okay, let's go to the second address by tying that address line high. Yeah, that's tied high. Let's go to the third address. Address two, that is. Now I need, for address three, I need an extra wire. Tied that high. Yes, so I mean all the locations, uh, well, the first four, are all FF, all ones in binary. So that EEPROM is fully erased. So is that it? Uh, well, not quite, because we haven't tried programming this EEPROM. The problem is programming is a bit tricky because it says here the programming mode is entered when plus 25 volts is applied to the VPP pin. Uh, output enable needs to be high. The address to be programmed is on the address lines. Well, that's easy. They're all pulled low. Uh, and then it says um, voltage level should be standard TTL when both address and data are stable a 50 millisecond TTL high level pulse is applied to the CE input to accomplish the programming 50 milliseconds hmm tricky so DC characteristics at uh, 25 volts on VPP plus or minus one volt Ooh, that's a bit tight uh, that'll do for that Okay, what else have we got? We need 30 milliamps during the programming pulse. Uh, VCC needs to be 100 milliamps while programming. I think the inner loops can manage that. These 9 volt nickel metal hydrides should be able to manage 30 milliamps. Um, what else have we got? We've got these timings. Now the program pulse width is minimum 45 milliseconds and maximum 55. So really this should be done by something with proper timing. I'm just going to do it by touching two wires together. So we need to take output enable high because we don't want to enable the output. So that needs to go high. Um, chip enable needs to be low and then go high for this 50 milliseconds. So I need to pull that low to start with and I need to pull output enable high. Let's do that. Now pulling output enable high, uh, which is there, of course turns off the outputs because while we're programming these of course are going to be inputs so I need to put resistors on these lines uh, to tie well I'll tie some high and some low because we don't want to um, we want to make sure we're getting the right value programmed in there so that's output enable now I need to deal with chip enable right I'm gonna to have to replace uh, these LEDs which are now off anyway because output enable has been uh, disabled that's been taken high and I'm going to have to put resistors in. Now let's go for 1001, 1001. That's 99 hexadecimal, just so that I know that it's programmed as I intended it. Now it goes without saying that this is not the way to properly program an EEPROM. And if you're building, I don't know, a spaceship or a lunar lander or something, and you're sending people into space, then you don't want to be programming your microcomputer using this technique. Uh, so that's one zero zero. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be um, really putting lives at risk. You should use the proper pulse widths. Uh, I'm just going to touch the wires together for approximately a twentieth of a second. That's fifty milliseconds. Um, I haven't rehearsed this. It may not work and it may kill the chip. Just don't know yet. Right, let's go for this. Uh, address and data lines are all set. I've got my 99 data on there. I'm not going to be able to see anything. Uh, right, 25 volts. Let's apply that 
Now that's why I put that diode in because I'm putting that on the pin and I don't want to cause it to flow back into my VCC. So let's see what happens if I put 25 volts on there. Nothing yet. 50 millisecond pulse on these two wires. Bang. That should be it. Let's take my 25 volts out and switch off. Let's see if that worked. Well, that's very strange. Um, it's actually a fail. It didn't program it, but something really odd has happened. Um, with that LED, with that diode in on VPP, it just doesn't show anything. But if I take that out, it shows 21. That's what was in there before I erased it. What about the next location? Zero. What about the next location? Uh, that's E0. And the fourth location was 46, was it? Forty-six. How on earth has that happened? It hasn't programmed in my 99 at address zero, because that should be 99. It's actually put back the program that was in there before I erased the chip. Have I gone completely mad? Now the other chip, the one that was in the eraser, was this one, so it's that's not it. I haven't mixed the two up. And in fact, this, this has the data that was in it before I erased it. So I obviously didn't do a very good job of erasing it. Maybe I didn't leave it in the eraser for long enough. That's so weird. Now I'm not entirely surprised that the programming didn't work because this uh, set of batteries is actually measuring very nearly 26 volts. It does say in the absolute maximum ratings 26, so that is just within permissible range. This needed to provide 30 milliamps. I don't know whether the voltage of this would have dropped down a bit when I was programming. And of course, my 50 millisecond pulse would have been anything but. In fact, it would probably be lots of pulses because of the contact bounce. But it's actually put the program that I erased back. I am totally baffled. Uh, yeah, so for the moment, that's it. It's a fail. Or is it? I mean, that was a form of data recovery. That had been erased and I brought all the data back. EEPROM data recovery service uh, business, I think, I might set up. I might carry on playing with this uh, this afternoon and I may do an update if I uh, successfully erase and program this chip. But uh, for the moment, that's it. Weird. Cheerio.